Thank you, Holy Spirit. He is here this morning. Can we give the worship team a hand? Thank you. Thank you, dearest friend. What a wonderful time of praise, of worship. Surprise for you guys. They'll be back in a little bit. Yeah. You guys like to worship? I love to worship. I love worship more than I love music. Yeah. I invite you into that this morning. Love worship. Love him more than you love the music more than you love your favorite songs. And they are beautiful songs, but they all point to him. Hallelujah. 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 One more time. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm going to talk a little bit about hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah is a Hebrew word. First mentioned in the Psalms, mainly Psalms 113 through 118. Yah is short for Yahweh. The Hebrews had such a reverence for Yahweh, they wouldn't even say his complete name. They would say Yah or they would say Way. They wouldn't say it together. Yah. Hallel. Halal. Halel is from Halal. It simply means to praise, to praise. Hallelujah. It's actually for her hallelujah. So when I say hallelujah, you say Yahweh. hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 We can never say hallelujah enough. We can never praise Yahweh, enough. Psalms 113 through Psalms 118 were written about 300 years after the time of Moses' exodus and the Israelites from Israel. And it's David and the psalmists commemorating that freedom. It's a celebration of freedom 300 years later after Moses, after the Lord took Moses and the Israelites out of captive Egypt. Hallelujah. And Psalms 113 through 118 are there to commemorate and to celebrate Yahweh taking his people back from the darkness that was Egypt. A prophetic word, a prophetic act of what was to come. The stories in the Old Testament, look at them always through a prophetic lens. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. This act is all about Jesus. This war, this victory, this battle is all about Jesus. The freedom that the Israelites celebrated from captivity is all about the freedom that we celebrate today. Sin and death has no hold on us any longer. Amen. Amen. One more time. Hallelujah. Joyfully praise Yahweh. It is a joyful shout. It is a celebratory. Woo-hoo! It's a celebratory shout. I'm here to joyfully praise Yahweh. That's what hallelujah means. Live a life of hallelujah. When you wake up throughout your day, when you go to bed, hallelujah. Another word, and this is review for some of, so that's used a lot in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, which is mostly written in Greek, this word, you guys might have heard this. This will be review for some. Proskuneo. It is a Greek compound word. It's a combination to lean forward and kiss something. The picture is also used to describe a dog licking his master's hand. So here during a time of worship on Sunday mornings, 
and hopefully in your own home as well. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the father of Yeshua HaMashiach. I love Hebrew words. I love Aramaic. I love the Greek. Praise him. And also don't forget to fall before, to bow down, to kiss the master's hand as a token of reverence. Did you know that cultures that have never heard the name of Yahweh or the name of Yeshua do this? Throughout history, there's been many religions. There's this innate desire in all of humanity to want to worship something, to want to bow before something, to want to surrender to something. It's our human nature. And in a sense, it's also our heavenly nature. Did you know that they have worship in heaven? They do. There is worship here on earth. It's not as perfect as the one that is in heaven. But let us continue to call heaven down to earth. <laughs> so yeah, cultures throughout human history, Persian cultures, Greek cultures, some of the cultures that are being written to in the New Testament, they already bow before things. They already worship things. They already give themselves to things. To worship is to devote yourself to something to someone. It's to exalt something or someone greater, higher, and make yourself smaller. It's to declare allegiance, obedience. It's a lot of things. It's an act of surrender. It's to bend the knee before a king. You realize when people would come bend the knee towards a king, they're putting their lives in his hand, right? You guys get that? When you come and you bow before a king and he has armed guards and their swords and spears, the king can go like this, off with his head. Think of not just the reverence, but the trust that that requires to come and to bow and kneel before a king. Right? Many have done that throughout human history. Once again, a prophetic declaration. And some of them didn't even know what they were doing. It's our nature to want to do that. It's our nature to marvel. And it's an invitation for all of you guys and to invite everyone to marvel at the correct one, to kneel before the correct one, not the counterfeit. And we all know there's many counterfeits, but to Yahweh. So the last word is an English word. Worship. We all know that word, right? Worship is an English contraction. It's a short form of worth-ship. I didn't even know that till last year. Worth-ship. So when you come in here on a Sunday morning, how much is he worth to you that morning? When you're sitting on your couch or kneeling before him, how much is he worth to you? Go deep into your soul, deep into your spirit, and try to express, Yahweh, how much are you worth to me? So from here on out, we set a new standard in this house. This goes to all of you, to myself included, the worship pastor, the worship leader, right? There is no more indifference towards Yahweh in this house. Can I get an amen? There is no more indifference to Yahweh in this house. We all have rough mornings, right? We all have rough times, right? Guys, I've seen people worship like this in this house. I've seen worship leaders worship like this in this house. Body language is important, right? Right? And again, I'm preaching to myself here. I always will be. That's my commitment to you guys. Right? There have been mornings where I don't feel like coming in here. I'm leading. I don't feel like singing and playing. I've had a couple of rough months this last year or two, but so have many of you. 
okay? So break that off. Break that off when you walk through these doors. And most of you guys are doing really, really well, right? This is just a little pep talk for all of us this morning. How much is he worth to you? Coming in, sitting down, going, all right, band, entertain me. That's a pretty good song. I like it. Oh, they messed up the bridge on that one. That's the wrong note. Keyboard player, bass player. I have to break that off of myself, by the way. Ah, drummer missed that fill. And then next week I drum and I miss the fill. Dang it, it's the same fill. Oh, man, I've been leading worship a long time. One of, I want to share this with you guys. One of the greatest compliments I got, my buddy, um, my buddy Joshua, uh, down my first year of BSST in Eureka, California. I was leading worship. I, I was, some of you guys remember I used to lead worship, well, both as, as a youth, about 15 to 18 years ago, Carrie's youth group, and then later in my mid-20s, about 10 years ago, and, but it probably wasn't until California that I realized this was my own revelation in me. I'm just a singer. I didn't even really understand worship, you know, just as far as my character, my healing, my brokenness was, I was... I was, I confess to you guys, I was faking a lot of it. Now, that's not wrong. It's just the level of my healing. My God encounters my revelation. But down there, they kind of stripped me, the leaders, the mothers and fathers down there, stripped me of everything and said, yeah, yeah, we know you can sing and play. We need to make sure you can serve. Right? It's the greatest thing that happened to me in California. They broke me down, beat me down, gently, of course. Amazing mothers and fathers to a pulp. They go, oh, yeah, you got talent all around you, and, yeah, there's this and that, this and that, you know? But uh, right now we need you to put your guitar down, put your drums down. We need you to grab a broom. Or in our case, we need you to help wrap cables. Can you run sound? Can you do slides? Can you get the other worship people water? Honestly, guys, people I was probably twice as talented and skilled as, right? Come in there with my ego. I can do but Oh, man, this and that. And they go, yeah, we know. And, and, and a mother in my life who I saw last week actually told me, no, no, we know you can sing and play. We know you're probably more credible, more musically experienced than half the people here. That's not the point. That's not the point. Talent's a dime a dozen. Servanthood, though? We talked about servanthood a couple of weeks ago. Servanthood is real power servanthood is real strength servanthood is what actually starts looking like jesus right the god of the universe that came and served you wow how much is he worth to you wow worship as we know is not a song it's not a worship band it's not a set it's not a Spotify playlist. Worthship. It is to joyfully celebrate Yahweh. It is to kiss your master's hand, to bow before your king. It is to show him. On a wonderful, beautiful Sunday morning when you're feeling great, and also on a really rough Sunday morning where you did not even want to be here this morning, and you don't know how you dragged yourself. Highs and lows, no matter the circumstance. Lord, how much are you worth to me this morning? Show him. Oh, by the way, he doesn't need it. You do. We worship Yahweh. If you hang around me a lot, you'll get to know I love that term. I've seen a lot in my Christian walk. You see a lot when you go to a discipleship school and there's 100 new students from all over the country, all over the world, and we love Jesus, we love Jesus, we love Jesus, we love God, we love Yahweh. In my personal journey, I declare Yahweh, because when I declare Yahweh, I'm declaring the God of Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham, the father of Yeshua HaMashiach. Kind of sets me apart. If you haven't looked around there, a lot of people love God. I love God, you love God, we all love God. It's the same God, here, there, everywhere. Not to me, it's not. <laughs> no, no, I've had encounters with Yeshua. I've had encounters with Yahweh. That's not Allah, that's not Buddha. 
That's not this self-serving, dare I say, at times, American evangelical God that just we don't have a reverence for anymore. It's just this cultural icon that celebrities and people all over. I'm cool with God. I'm cool. You, you guys know what I'm talking about? No, no, no. I serve Yahweh. I tremble before Yahweh. I've had encounters with Yeshua. It's amazing, guys. What an amazing opportunity. In case you haven't noticed something about the Northwest, uh, a lot of people don't like to go to church. <laughs> a lot of Christians don't like to go to church. A lot of them are not worshiping. A lot of them are not making disciples. A lot of them don't even know where to find the gospel of Matthew in the Bible. What an amazing opportunity for us. Guys, the Northwest is a mission field. Your lens, your perspectives. You can go, ah, oh, Northwest is so godless, this and that, whatever. I go, no, I'm called to the nations. Lily and I fell in love. One of the ways we fell in love is like, hey, I'm called to the nations. I'm called to the nations too. We're called to the nation of Hood River County. <laughs> We're called to the nation of uh, Wasco County and Skamania and Klickitat County, right? Another land where sometimes they serve other gods. Sometimes they serve counterfeits, right? I told a, I told a person, I don't know why. I don't know, about six months ago I was at Rosar's, what I call just the high school cafeteria. Uh, <laughs> graduates of Hood River Valley High, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Amy, Stan, like you just, Kayla, like, it's just the cafeteria all over again, <laughs> you know? Um, it's a beautiful thing. We all know each other, you know? Leaving for eight years, coming back, it's like, wow, I, I know half the employees here and half the customers. That's, that's cool, but I don't know. I ran into someone and this and that, and I told them, as many of you guys know, I lost my mom in the fall um, in October. And, uh, yeah, it was just kind of like fresh. It probably happened within a month or two, and it was just like, yeah, this or that. I go, I lost my mom, but she's no longer in pain. Um, she's with Jesus now. And I won't forget this. This person looked at me like, they cocked their head back. I don't think they knew who Jesus was. This was a full-grown adult around my age. I don't think they had any grid or reference for who this Jesus was. And I was like, oh, wow, these are different times, right? Especially if you're Oregon, Washington, California. What an opportunity to invite people to have encounters with Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, the anointed one, the one set apart by Yahweh, the one that gave his life for you and for me that invites us to give our lives for each other, to lay down our lives for each other and our opinions and our motives. Yeshua is set apart. Yahweh is set apart. He's not like other gods. By the, by the way, I'm a bold, in-your-face person. I don't mind declaring this. Yahweh is the one true God. That is who I'm banking my entire eternity on. I don't care what people say. I'm not here to please anyone. I'm not here to perform or impress for anyone. I fear him. In a good way, I revere him. I want to spend eternity with him. And I want to continue having amazing encounters with him. Both here at the Sunday morning assembly of the brethren, if you will, and in my room. And in my car when my wife and I are worshiping him. Out in nature. We just celebrated Earth Day a couple weeks ago or a week or two ago. Earth Day, Earth Day, Earth Day. Wonderful, great, awesome. Be careful. Remember, our nature is to want to worship something, bow before something. I have friends, former disciples of mine, who we used to sing about. Yahweh, we used to serve Yahweh, Yeshua. They don't do that anymore. They do the earth and they do dharma, and they do all sorts of different idols and gods and lifestyles and stuff like that. And I go, be careful. That's a message for another day, but take care of your hurt. Take care of your offenses, right? We do have an enemy. He wants to take you out. His bait is offense. John Bevere wrote about that. It's offense. He wants to take you out. You get offended at 
your mom, your dad, your pastor, your roommate, and suddenly you don't love Jesus anymore? That's weird, but that's a message for another day. Earth Day, it took me to a passage here. The earth is the Lord's and all it contains. Not just the earth, but all who dwell in it. He founded the earth on top of the seas and the rivers. And later in Psalm 24, that's where it's out of, it starts talking and it says, who is this king of glory? He is the Lord of hosts. He is Yahweh. He is who we hallelujah. We joyfully praise Yahweh. The earth points to him. Creation is amazing. The planet is amazing, but it all points to him. We've all had moments in nature. Oregon's beautiful. The whole West Coast is beautiful. I used to live in Humboldt County, you know, and I moved to kind of closer to Napa County, and now I'm back here in Hood River County and all that whole thing. It's like, wow, it's, it's amazing. But I go, it's not amazing as heaven's going to be. Whew. <laughs> You may also worship Jesus. The Magi worshiped Jesus in the Christmas story. That's in Matthew. During the triumphant entry, during Hosanna, talked about that a couple weeks ago, they worshiped Jesus. He is our Savior, our salvation. When Jesus walked on water, the disciples, his own disciples, had nothing else but to worship him. And when he resurrected, which we just celebrated recently, oh, they worshiped. He is the one. Wow. We've all heard this. Let me read this. It's out of John 4, 23. Jesus is speaking to a half-breed, sinful Samaritan woman. And he says, oh, I love this. I read it often. But an hour is coming, an hour is coming and now is, that's Jesus, when true worshipers will worship the Father, Yahweh, in spirit and in truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. His worshipers. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and and in truth. We can worship in our flesh, right? We can sing. We can lift our hands. We can bow before. We can, if somebody misuses the platform, we can put on shows up here. I can put up a show on here, right? But spirit and truth, that's his realm. He is the spirit of truth. That's his realm. That's the one he judges righteously. That's the one we can perform in front of people. We can't perform in front of him. We all know that. He is seeking worshipers. Oh, I love this. Our is coming and now is, Jesus, it's me, now is, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So when you come and you offer your worship, your worth-ship, how much is he worth to you? Singing, lifting your hands, dancing, clapping, our cymbals and our harps and our lyres, all that's great. Let's do that. But our spirit and truth has to align. Yeah, we can't lie in that realm. There's no lies. There's only truth. It is in our nature. Can I have a little bit of water? Thank you, Jesus. It's in our nature, guys. I've said this a bunch. To want to worship something. When I was a kid in Sunday school, I used to kind of wonder, and even growing up, why did the Israelites, when Moses went up on Mount Sinai and got the law, why did Aaron and whoever was left, why the Israelites 
worship a golden calf. That's stupid, right? Right? That's how I thought as a kid, as a young person. And then you go into digging and studying. They had been away from their faith. They had been away from their tradition from Yahweh, their father Abraham, for 400 years. They were in captivity. They were slaves. All they saw from Egyptian worship was worshiping idols. Was sacrificing before idols. And the pharaohs also had the people worship them. The pharaohs actually walked around and thought, I am a god. Right? And so it gave me a little bit of understanding for the children of Israel in Exodus where, you know, there's this frustration there. And and they go, all we know is to worship things to build things and bow before them and kneel before them and worship them. So it it was their nature. Again, worship is good. That's actually why they were sent out to the desert. Right? (laughs) Thank you, Stan. Uh, Stan is having God encounters. Get him, Lord. Get him, Lord. Get him, Lord. Right? So they're, they're worshiping and they go, this is all we know. Let's just melt our gold, the gold that we were asked by the Lord to take with us when we went out of captivity. What do we do? We don't, Moses is up there. He's been up there for days. He was up there 40 days, right? And you're like, we need to worship something. Did we not come out here to worship? So they get their gold, and they build this golden calf and worship, and Moses comes down. He's like, what are you doing, this and that? The Lord was going to end all that. Because once again, the Lord wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. Right? And he gave them instructions and they sacrificed and they killed tons and tons of cows and pigeons and doves and sprinkled blood on golden altars left and right. Right? Prophetic word of sacrifice. Because of sin, there needs to be a life. Your life? Nah, the life of Yeshua. Right? All pointing to Yeshua, the greatest sacrifice in all of eternity. So I have some compassion for the children of Israel. Guys, they didn't know better. You know, they didn't have the flannel gram Bible stories like we had in Sunday school. They didn't have veggie tales or Bible man. They didn't have a Bible. They, that came later. It's all they knew, right? And so when you see someone worshiping other religions, worshiping idols, Addiction might be a form of worship, right? Have your heart break with compassion. They're actually headed the right direction. Their compass is a little off. Point them to Yeshua. Point them to Yahweh. Invite them. Pray for them. Right? The the name of Jesus is still powerful, right? He still heals, right? Yeah. Believe it. Start living like you believe it. Start declaring like you believe it. Start living, yeah, start living like it. Start inviting others, you know. Thank you for coming out and assembling. I think we can put two to three times more people in here. Not for numbers sake, but for love's sake, for discipleship's sake, which is what he asked. Because you people are wonderful, and there are other wonderful people out there that would love to be here wonderful with you guys. And we can all wonderful in the midst of earth, which is tough sometimes. We can just worship him together. Praise him. Hallelujah. That was a phrase for the festivals. And when they would, it would be a leader that would say, hallelujah, and the crowd would respond. You can worship him, or you can worship other idols, other things. But those aren't real. They're false. They're man-made. So what you're really doing is worshiping yourself. Do you know yourself? I know myself. I don't want to worship myself. I've discussed this before. There was a creature in heaven, an instrument of worship, who one day said, enough of this worship to Yahweh. What about me? When is it my turn? Right? So it says in Ezekiel and in Isaiah 14, 
talks about this story of this beautiful instrument of worship that was seduced by his own beauty, it says, and he demanded ascension. What about me? Jesus himself says he saw him fall. To worship ourselves is satanic in nature. Of course, this is a fallen world. You know, we're naturally going to lean that way. Not to, want, not to just want to actively worship ourselves, but to want to just please ourselves and do our own thing and do things our way, right? Have you ever met someone like that? On any given day, it's all of us, right? That's what we're being sanctified from us. That's what we're being transformed out of. We're on our way. But still, that old man, as Paul says, kind of creeps back up sometimes, like, uh, no, 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 no. Worship him. Worship him. Fix your eyes on him. Exalt him. And all that self stuff kind of starts to dwindle away. Whew, he is enough. Worship him in every situation. The first recorded act of worship and praise is actually in the book of Job. You guys remember what happened to Job? Right? He loses everything. And the first thing he does, he gets up, he tears his robe, he shaves his head, he falls to the ground and worships. All his money, all his possessions, and all his children were just killed. He just lost everything. And the first thing he does, excuse me, falls to the ground and worships. And it says here, In the first chapter of Job, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Says here, despite all this, Job did not sin, nor did he blame God. Later on, Abraham worshiped when Jesus, when the Lord, (laughs) ha ha, is the Lord. When God told Abraham, come, sacrifice your son. Right? Abraham was actually a descendant. His, Abraham's father was an idol maker. Right? Yahweh had not revealed himself yet. So they made idols and they served other gods. And they would sacrifice their children to this god named Molech. Right? Who still wants babies sacrificed to him. In another, in another way. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Right? So that's been there for thousands of years. And this God, Yahweh, promises Abraham a son, promises him a lineage, and then he says, come and sacrifice your son to me. Abraham must have assumed that this new God, this God he's just like Molech, okay, here we go. That's, that's what we do. And as we know, the angel of the Lord stops and he goes, no, 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 no. Check this out. I'm going to blow your mind here. I'm not like other gods. I don't want you to sacrifice your son for me. I'm going to sacrifice my son for you. That's the kind of God that I am. That's who you get to have a relationship with. It still blows my mind. Right? Wow. When Moses was asked to bring out the Israelites... In his encounter with the Lord in the burning bush, the Lord said, you tell Pharaoh they need to come out and worship me. They need to sacrifice before me. As we know, King David made a mess with a young lady named Bathsheba, right? And then there's a consequence. But it says here at the end of 2 Samuel, After the mess he's made, he had his dear friend killed, slept with his wife. She's pregnant. He's trying to cover it up. A prophet comes in, lets him know, you you can't hide this from me. You can't hide this from him. And then the baby dies. It says here, David got up from the ground, washed, anointed himself, changed his clothes, And he went into the house of the Lord, and he worshiped. 
the Bible has a long history of worshiping him actually when things go wrong. A lot of festivals, but actually when things go wrong. Worship him always. In every situation. In the morning, at night. Make sure you're worshiping him in your home, guys. Right? Church is not on Sunday morning. That's the assembly. That's where we come, celebrate, join together, encourage each other, worship corporately. If you need prayer, so we do. But your faith, what I meant to say is your faith is not just on Sunday mornings. Sunday morning is a celebration of your faith. I hope your faith is Monday through Saturday, in the morning, at lunchtime, in the early evening, right before you go to bed. Worship him always. Turn with me to Psalm 95. So how do we worship him? Just these first couple of verses. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord, which we did this morning and we'll do again. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before our maker. We'll stop there. Later in that psalm, it talks about make sure you don't harden your hearts like others have done before. Make sure you keep your, soft, keep your heart soft, tender, never indifferent to him. In the Gospel of Luke, and I'm not going to read it, we, we've all heard the story of a sinful woman, a prostitute, that comes and she breaks perfume, very expensive perfume. She breaks it over Jesus' feet, wipes him with her tears. That is an act, a powerful act of worship. And that had nothing to do with a worship set and a worship band and a Sunday morning. That had to do with a very broken, very marginalized, very sinful person that knew She's in the midst of someone, something. Perhaps this Jesus, this Messiah is all I've got left. Right? Turn with me. Well, I'll, I'll read this for you. In Revelation 4, there are 24 elders, and there are four living creatures. This is what worship in heaven looks like right now. Day and night, they do not cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty who was and is and is to come. And when the living creatures give glory and honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever. The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. And because your will, they existed and were created. Holy, holy, holy. Wow. Psalm 100. I'll read this for you. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
and his courts with praise. Enter this place with hallelujah. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting. His faithfulness to all generations. Let me read the last psalm, which is Psalm 150. As an instrumentalist, I love this one. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound, with harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Oh, love seeing them dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and pipe. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Boy, our cymbals do get loud in here. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And it ends with praise the Lord. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is what we're doing here. Amen, amen, amen. Can I have the band come up? I'm going to read a paraphrased passage out of 2 Samuel 6. Many of us know this story. David and his men bringing back the Ark of the Covenant. Let me read this for you. David and all the house of Israel were celebrating with, before the Lord with all kinds of instruments made of fir wood and with lyres, harps, tambourines, castanets, and cymbals. And so it was that when the bearers of the Ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. And David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of trumpet. Then it happened as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David that Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. Later on, when David returned to bless his household, Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, how the king of Israel distinguished himself today. He uncovered himself today in the eyes of his servants, his servants' maids, and as one of the foolish one, shamelessly uncovers himself. So David said to Michael, it was before the Lord who chose me above your father and above all this house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore, I will celebrate before the Lord. I will be more lightly esteemed than this. Other translations say undignified than this. And I will be humble in my own eyes. But with the maids of whom you have spoken, with them, I will be distinguished. Amen. I encourage you to read the Psalms. Read as many Psalms as you can weekly. Get you pumped for worship. Read them. Memorize them. We sing them on Sunday mornings. David understood. David has been appointed king of Israel. He understood all oh, this is because of him. Because of Yahweh. I owe it all to Yahweh. I am the newly minted king of Israel, and I will look like a fool before all the people that I'm leading. He is worthy of that. Linen ephod, a priestly garment David wasn't even supposed to wear. It's, like, it's almost like he was jealous in a holy way of the priesthood. I'm a king, but I'd rather be a priest in this moment. 
They get to sacrifice to God. They get to spend time in his presence. I want to do that. The newly minted king of Israel. I will wear a goofy costume that's not even for me. I will dance like a fool in front of all my people and all these servants who I'm above and they're below, right? No, I will go lower than them. He is worthy of that. Worship, as in worth-ship, how much is he worth to you? I'll become more undignified than this, he tells his wife. So I invited the band back up. <sighs> Lord, we love you. We love worship in this house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that just like you prophesied, we can now worship you in spirit and in truth. I thank you, Lord, that we don't have to, <laughs> we don't have to kill cows and oxen and doves and pigeons Jesus you took care of it all on the cross thank you that we get to worship you in spirit and in truth we get to joyfully praise Yahweh we get to bow before you we get to kiss you master thank you that we get to become undignified Thank you, Lord, for that privilege, for that invitation. I thank you, Lord, that we get to do it on Sunday mornings, but also Monday through Saturday in our own homes and in our own cars. And I thank you, Lord, that you are there the same. I thank you that we get to worship you, fix our eyes on you, celebrate you for all eternity. Thank you, Lord, for a new revelation of worship this morning, of worship, for a new revelation of hallelujah, for a new revelation of proscuneo, to bow before you, to kneel before our King. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Yahweh. Can you guys all stand up with us, please? Let us go back into worship, for he is worthy.
Yeah, breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Every hand lifted up in this place. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He who was in these to come. Yeah, keep singing holy, keep singing holy. Yeah, there's more, there's more, there's more breakthrough. There's more breakthrough. There's more, there's more. <laughs> Woo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, respond, respond. Especially if it's uncomfortable. Especially if you don't want to. Especially if you have bad knees like me. <laughs> Respond, respond. Lift him up or bow before him. He is worthy. He is worthy. Oh. Lord, we surrender our dignity. We surrender our self-consciousness. Like the breakthrough King David got, we will be fools for you. We bow before you, King Jesus. We joyfully praise you, Yahweh. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! There's more, there's more, there's more. There's more. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, teach us how to worship. Teach us how to worship, Holy Spirit. Thank you.
He delights in obedience. He delights in obedience. Thank you, Lord. Once again, we thank you for the breakthrough this morning. For the encounters with you this morning. For the encounter with heaven this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go ahead and celebrate him. Yes, a new standard has been set in this house this morning. This house worships him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're just getting started. We're just getting started. Go out into the nation of Hood River and White Salmon and all around. Disciple them. Call them home, guys. You are blessed. We are so blessed. Thank you guys for a wonderful morning. Thank you, Yahweh. <laughs> if you need prayer, Chuck is going to come up here with a prayer team. If you need to go, you can go. If you don't need to go, just hang out and be family, guys. We're not in a rush. Hang out and be family. Continue worshiping. Pray for someone or get prayer from someone. Have a wonderful day and joyfully praise Yahweh. <laughs>